Hello, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today I'm presenting my eight varietal video series on Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris is a name of a variety that's related to Pinot Noir. Pinot Gris stands for the gray variety, gris being gray in French. It's thought to have originated as a color mutation of Pinot Noir in the northeast part of France and or the southwest part of Germany many hundreds of years ago. And in fact, it's thought that maybe it has developed independently at several different times during the course of history. In this case, we might call it a clone as that's the definition of a clone, a variety that has a different genetic makeup due to some sort of mutation in its genome. And varieties normally develop from sexual crossing over or reproduction. And in this case, this is a natural somatic mutation that occurred in Pinot Noir, as there are other varieties such as Pinot Blanc and Pinot Meunier, which are also mutations of the Pinot Noir genome. And technically speaking, biologically speaking, we would call those clones. But because of their importance in the grape industry, they've been designated their own separate grape variety. So there are several different synonyms for Pinot Gris, some of which are Burgunder Roter, Grauer Burgunder, Malvoisier, Pinot Grigio, which is the Italian name for Pinot Gris or Gray, Zirkebarat and Toque. Some of these are still in use. Some of these names have been changed or removed over historical time. And for the most part nowadays, most people are calling the gray Pinot Gris. The popular locations for where it's grown are in France, Italy, Germany, USA, Hungary, Australia, and New Zealand. Pinot Gris likes a cool climate. It does best in cool climates, in the coolest of climates for most grapes, as you can see here on this profile. It has moderate cold hardiness, which is very similar to Pinot Noir, which makes sense since it's a genetic mutant of Pinot Noir. It's going to have many of the characteristics of Pinot Noir. It likes cool days and cool nights. Those would be the ideal conditions for growing Pinot Gris. And it can be grown on a wide variety of soil types. Pinot Gris has moderate vigor. The leaves are similar to Pinot Noir in that they have three to five shallow lobes. They have a moderately deep U-shaped petiolar sinus as seen here down below and a tooth margin. The shoot tips are hairy and slightly pinkish. Sometimes they're not as in this other picture of Pinot Gris on the right. So the clusters are tight, similar to Pinot Noir, but the berry color is variable, ranging from a light pinkish gray to a darker blue-black colors, as in Pinot Noir. And this can happen on a single cluster. You can get variation, sometimes even white berries, on a cluster of Pinot Gris. And this is because the mutation is rather complicated in the grape berry, and it can be displayed in multiple ways and variations. The berries in Pinot Gris are round. It's a relatively productive grapevine. It has moderate yields up to about five tons per acre. It's also a little bit more difficult to grow than most grape varieties, as is Pinot Noir. It's grown in a vertical shoot positioning system. It has early bud break and ripening, similar to Pinot Noir. And at our Valley Road Experiment Station, we found the season to be from about the beginning of May to mid-September, or even the first week of October, depending on the season and the warmth and temperature and the earliness of bud break. The bricks ranged as low as 21 in shorter years to as high as 25. And the TAs also range from a value of five to 6.5, depending on the year. The aroma and flavor descriptions of this wine are variable as well, depending on the area that it's grown in, where you can find more thin, crisp, citrus-style wines from Italy 
to apples and pears in Oregon, to a rich, luscious, ripe peach or apricot flavors and floral bouquet from the Alsace region. Wines that are made from this grape would come out pink in color if they are not pressed off the skins right away. And that would also change the flavor profile quite a bit as the skins have most of the flavor components in the grape. Wines can vary in sweetness depending on the fermentation process imposed by the winemaker, especially those in the Alsace region. There are at least 10 registered clones at the Foundation Plant Services at UC Davis, California, but there's not much known about the differences in these clones or the production characteristics. So in summary, Pinot Gris has potential for Northern Nevada, but it's what I would say moderate in the moderate level. There are other varieties that have more potential than Pinot Gris. And that's largely by my judgment to be because it's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more finicky of a grape to grow, and it's a little bit less cold hardy. It has early bud break and early ripening, the early bud break being a little bit detrimental for early frosts, but the early ripening being good because it comes in before the frost in the, in the fall. It's moderately productive, as I said, with a moderate cold hardiness. And its best wines come from cool climate regions. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video and would like to see other videos like this, then I suggest you subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can find more videos on other varieties, viticultural practices, and winemaking practices. Have a great day.